Welcome to the channel, friends. As always, man, I'm super stoked and pumped up to see it. So today I'm going to give you some mock board questions as it relates to first aid. This was, a, 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 I was putting this ahead of schedule, if you will. Somebody had uh, left some comments and said, hey, Stoke, you know, can you do one on first aid? And I said, hey, you know what? You asked for it, here it goes. I'm going to do all the subject areas that you can think of. So you can hang on tight. But if there is one that you're looking for ahead of another, and I haven't already done it, uh, let, leave a comment, man, and, uh, and we'll get to it. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to give you a board question, and I'm going to pause slightly so that, if, that way if you want to pause the video, you can pause it, say your answer, right, and then hit uh, play again, and I'll tell you what the book answer is. And then uh, after we get through a few of them, I'm going to give you some situational questions. That way we can have some discussion and dialogue. And, and along the way, I'll give you a few tricks and tips on how to answer questions, how to control the board. And that's what this channel is all about, right? It's all about my uh, desire and hope to help give you all something that's going to make your career better and set you up for more success than what I had coming up in the military. So if that's what you're about as well and you want to help prepare yourself for those who are in your charge for success, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you can stay up to date on some future content. So question numero uno, what does the acronym TCCC stand for? TCCC stands for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Try the name. All you got to do is remember the acronyms, T and three C's. <laughs> but that is something that you want to do, right? You know, as somebody ask, asks you a question, use a part of that question in your answer. Don't just say, tactical combat casualty care. It's going to come across too weird. You're spitting things out. No matter how fast I ask my question, no matter how angry I get with you, you have to maintain your composure and just slow things down. And one of the best ways to slow things down is by taking a, a, a short pause between question mark and the start of your answer and putting some of the answer or the question into your answer. So question number two. What are the phases of TCCC? Right, so the phases of uh, TCCC are care under fire, uh, tactical field care, and combat casualty evacuation care, right? If you can't remember all three, name off the ones that you do know. That's okay with that. And if you want to throw in and for future or for additional reference, I would, uh, you know, look at back into TC4-02.1, uh, then, then do that. That makes it even better. You know, see, odds are I'm not going to ask you. You know, some, some of my peers, they will ask dumb questions like, what is the regulation concerning first aid? Man, if, if you don't know that, I don't want you in the board. Right? That, that, that's an easy question. Right? I'm not about that. And I, I'm not all about the hard questions. But, but I need you to know more than that. So what I'm actually giving you is the opportunity to put that in your answer. Put that regulation in an answer. Mm. It slows down and lengthens, it lengthens your answer, right? The longer that you talk, the less questions the board can ask. That's a pro tip number one. In combat, what is the most likely threat to a casualty's life? The most likely threat to a casualty's life is the loss of blood, right? And that, that's why tourniquets are such a big stinking deal now, right? Uh, and thank goodness for it, because it, it has certainly saved a lot of lives. So what are the symptoms of heat exhaustion? All right, so this is one of those questions. By the way, th this is what I bring into a board. And, and as you can see, right, it's a, a list here, right? Right there. Sometimes it's a long paragraph in, in a book. Um, Sometimes it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a list, like the, the nine signs, and we'll get to that one here in just a second, right? Um, so what you need to do when you're answering your question is either name them off verbatim or use a phrase such as the symptoms of heat exhaustion include and then begin to list as many as you can. 
So they include profuse sweating, pale, moist, cool skin, headache, weakness, dizziness, loss of appetite, cramping, nausea with or without vomiting, urge to defecate, chills, rapid breathing, tingling of the hands and or feet, and confusion, i.e. not answering questions easily or correctly. So you, you could do that. Um, you could even throw in something from your own experience. And that's a great way, you know, when you're trying to answer the, the, this question, if you can't name them off all verbatim, say, well, first, Sergeant, in my experience, what I've seen, some symptoms of heat exhaustion. I had a soldier who displayed signs of heat exhaustion. And this is what I, how I recognized that and then moved on to actually give him some first aid. You know, he was, he was sweating his butt off. But his, his, and he had a really bad headache, but he was cold and clammy. And he looked at me with these dazed and confused eyes. Now, of course, what's going to happen from there is I'm going to ask you what you did, right? So don't be making up no BS stories because now if you get caught in a lie, I'm going to kick you out. <laughs> so what are the nine symptoms of shock? Right, so the nine symptoms of shock include a sweaty but pool... Uh, sweaty but cool skin, pale skin, restlessness or nervousness, thirst, severe bleeding, confusion, rapid breathing, blotchy blue skin, nausea, and or vomiting. What is the first step for care under fire? You need re the first step to care under fire is returning fire before, before providing medical treatment. Oh, gotcha, but I mean, your, your battle buddy is bleeding out. You see that he just lost a limb, and you're going to tell me that you're not going to take two seconds to apply a tourniquet? <sighs> so always a follow-up question. And how you answer that is either going to give me a thread to pull and unravel you completely, or it's going to help save your board appearance. So stick to the answer. The answer is you're going to return fire. You can't save your battle buddy if you're dead. When would you apply a tourniquet? Well, just like in that scenario of your battle buddy having lost a limb, that's a time and place you're going to apply a tourniquet. Uh, but if they have severe bleeding from a limb, maybe you've suffered uh, amputation, and or you've, you know, you've administered some life-saving hemorrhage control uh, that it's not working, and or you need to move your casualty, right? Or before you move your casualty. So those are some different things. Those are some of the standard questions that you could be asked. All right now we'll move into some situational type questions. So you're preparing to conduct a class on first aid. How will you resource plan, execute the training? All right, so this is a question that I have for a variety of topics. And if you can get through something like this, you're probably going to be okay. So if, I just need you to think about troop leading procedures. I need you to think about eight step training model. I need you to think about uh, the doctrines that as, as it directly relates to the topic at hand and how some of the things that maybe you've seen that you want to bring to the table. All right, so if you've been identified, you want to go ahead and identify an assistant instructor. And now you want to start getting into the book. So you want to get into 4-02.1. And you want to identify in ATN, you want to get that T-E-N-O. And you want to understand exactly what the, the, the task is, right? What are the steps? What are the performance measures? What else do you need in your class to, to, to touch on? And you want to start developing a training outline. Maybe it's some butcher block paper. Maybe it's a PowerPoint presentation. Where are you going to teach this class? I want to request to go out to a training area. So I'm going to uh, get with my uh, orderly room and training room and to, to get with S3 and get a training area locked on. I want to see who has a signature card for task C so I can go get some training aids, right? All kinds of th resources out there. And then you're going to train yourself and you're going to train your trainer. And you're, uh, in other words, you're going to be doing some rehearsals, right? Then you can prepare your book for your class. So you will have your TE, you know, you'll have 4-02.1. You will have the task condition and standards all the, uh, in, in your lesson outline, right? You're going to have a visitor's uh, sign-in book. You're going to have a class roster so that it can be put into DTMS. 
And then you're going to go out and you're going to give your class, you conduct an after action review and make sure, again, that it all gets, uh, gets out there. And depending on if you're giving like a specific class, like how are you going to teach it, you know, how to uh, deal with symptoms of shock. And don't forget about outside resources that you have. You know, there's a lot of medics around post and a lot of other subject matter experts that if you just go ask, they'll come in and help teach, right? Maybe you need uh, uh, some demonstrators. So you need to train your demonstrators as well. So question number two, situational question number two, is while in the field you notice a soldier displaying signs of heat exhaustion, what steps do you take? So if you have a question like this, that what you need to do is you need to throw in some of the signs of heat exhaustion. And so if, I, so if you have a soldier who's showing signs of heat exhaustion, make sure you list some of them off. Like, you know, if I had a soldier who had profuse sweating, and they seemed a little weak, a little dizzy. They couldn't really comprehend what I was saying and be able to answer some simple questions. This is what I would do. Again, you just lengthened the time that you're talking, which gives time in, in, in your Rolodex up here in this brain housing group to start spinning and come across an answer. Maybe it's a, a scenario about moving somebody to the shade, about loosening their clothing, about getting them to sip some water. but continuing to monitor and assess them for uh, some other symptoms until that they were good and or you needed to take them to uh, some urgent care. During a foot march, a soldier twists their ankle. What are your actions? Simple sprain, man. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with their gear? What if you don't have a vehicle? Who's going to take their weapon? Or how are they going to put weight on their foot? You know, you're not even going to make them carry their own water? What if he becomes a heat catch? And so as you're answering, you know, just expect for, for, for uh, some follow-up questions like that. All right, I'm going to leave you uh, with one more um, question here. And of course, it, it's how to properly send a nine-line medevac. And I'm, I'll do another video for a nine-line medevac, but, but you should know that, you know, walking in. If you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you like it. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell if you want to stay up to date on some future content. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, uh, and we'll just keep this conversation rolling. As always, until then, man, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.